90 kilometers of cross country trails, 50 kilometers of snowshoe trails, and one biathlon range. Get into the heart of winter. Go on, take a shot today on the Express. Coming up, the biathlon experience. One of many things to try at Whistler Olympic Park. Four for five, not bad. Then meet our sliding stars of tomorrow. This is one of the best resources that the ski hill has for honing your avalanche skills. And the fix list probes into learning more about avalanches and backcountry. I think a lot of people take it for granted that they're skiing in a safe area. Shoot, slide and search today on the Express. Welcome to the Express. You'll only find it here on Shaw TV. I'm your Sea to Sky host, Nicole Fitzgerald. What to do in the mountains? There's so many choices here at Whistler Olympic Park, from cross-country skiing to biathlon to snowshoeing. And if you're really ambitious, you can do it all in one day. Kids in the Sea to Sky quarter can't get enough of these snowy sports, especially up at the Whistler Sliding Centre, where one Squamish youth celebrated his 13th birthday in a very unique way. First place. My first time uh, was 43.3, which is a new personal best for me. A wish come true for any BC Luge development team athlete, but this one was particularly special for Squamish's Nikki Klimchuk Brown. All right, good run. Happy birthday, Nikki. I turned 13 today. When I walked out here, and then everyone was there. I was surprised. Happy birthday, Nikki! These screaming friends surprised Nikki at the BC Luge Cup at the Whistler Sliding Centre on February 13th. A notable birth date, not just for Nikki, but for the second anniversary of the 2010 Winter Olympic Games. Two years have passed, and already this sliding mecca is well on its way to rivaling other facilities not just in ice and turns, but also in volunteers and athlete development. We're a small group, but we're, uh, we're very solid in, in, uh, in, in retrospect to, to Calgary to, to make sure that we can uh, compete. They've developed really well. Not only was the event great tonight, but they get to spend a lot of time with uh, the age-appropriate kids from Alberta. So we've got a really good competitive system starting to develop between the two provinces or the two venues, and it's been fantastic. Only his second season on the ice, 12-year-old Emil Galaz is now stepping onto podiums this winter. I started a bit later than Nikki and the others, and I kind of, I'm catching up to them now. He started doing once a week, now he's doing five, five days a week, so he's definitely involved in, in the sport. And that dedication is paying off. Emil, along with other select team members, were chosen to train at the Utah Park City track last month. A first for this crew. They're laid out different, so like in this track you gotta be kind of more aggressive, but then in the Utah track it's kind of just let it run, just use your shoulders a lot, but in Calgary it's just all about the shoulders. There's gonna be a point where you're gonna be traveling to a lot of different tracks. You really gotta learn all those techniques. There are more podium finishes to come for the BC Development Luge team. Already one former team member, Jenna Spencer, who hands out medals tonight, has advanced to the national team and is now meddling in Junior World Cups around the globe. I think there's many more Jenna Spencers in our program from an eight-year-old up to the Olympic champions and, and you know, uh, the people that do get on this track, it's a, it's a great privilege to be able to take that appetite for speed and representing their country and becoming a better citizen. An international one on this team, with Maple Leafs embracing other countries' flags. Veronica is uh, Argentinian-Canadian. My son is Mexican. So I just wanted for him to have some identity, so it's the, the Mexican flag with the Maple Leaf. I think uh, these kids need more support, and any support they can get will be really appreciated by the entire team. From Whistler, I'm Nicole Fitzgerald for Shaw TV. Get out and cheer on our Olympians of tomorrow. There are plenty of viewing opportunities at the Whistler Sliding Centre, including the BC Luge Championships March 3rd and 4th, and the Canada Luge Youth Cup March 9th and 10th. You can find out more details at thewhistlersslidingcentre.com. 
the Whistler Sliding Centre and Whistler Olympic Park are both legacies of the 2010 Olympic Games. There are great opportunities here to check out new sports. This next one requires a steady hand. We have biathlon. So that's one of the Olympic sports uh, that you can try here. We also have cross-country skiing and uh, snowshoeing. There are of course two different types of cross-country skiing to learn here at Whistler Olympic Park. Skate and Classic. I'm opting for the private lesson in skate and I'm here with Jess Blankern who's been a competitive skier for 10 years and now she's coaching at Whistler Olympic Park. What are we going to work on today? Okay, to get started on our skate skiing lesson, we're going to start off by getting rid of our poles to work on our free skate technique and we're going to do a drill called Dorothy. So during this drill, we need to think about getting our ankles nice and close together so that we can actually tap them together. We offer skate skiing and classic skiing and on weekends we offer Discover uh, programs for both skate and uh, classic for the Never Ever and Novice Skiers and you can also uh, do a private lesson. That was great Nicole. Thanks. So now we taught you how to ski fast, now we're going to teach you how to shoot straight. Come on over here. The biathlon experience is uh, where you come and just try marksmanship. So there's no skiing uh, required if you don't have any skiing skills. Simply just to try your hand at uh, trying to hit five targets, like the biathletes. We try to give you a brief history of the uh, biathlon sport. And if you don't know anything about rifles, don't be scared. If you've never held a rifle, we'll explain to you all the safety, how to aim, uh, and how to uh, hit a target. Four for five, not bad. You missed one, you have to do one penalty loop. What's a penalty loop? Penalty loop is when you miss a target, you have to ski 150 extra meters. Cross country skiing, snowshoeing, the best way to wrap up the day at Whistler Olympic Park is here at the Day Lodge. There's a rental facility here, as well as ski waxing, and of course, a cafe. You get yummy soups and sandwiches made by Whistler Cooks, as well as cheese fondue, which I'm gonna have by the fire. Wednesday night fondue is a great way to finish after skiing. So, uh, cheers! <laughs> Worcester Cooks has a, a fondue for two people. There's also a new package that includes the fondue as well as rentals, the night adult pass as well as, as a beverage of your choice. This is where the Olympics were and we have world-class facilities both for biathlon, for ski jumping as well as cross-country skiing. But there's also an opportunity for just a recreational athlete to discover the valley. It's a big, big valley. We get lots of snow and six months of skiing, so pure bliss. March is Ski Jump Month at Whistler Olympic Park. Kids can learn how to ski jump over a three-day session. The snow sports continue. Next up, the fits list. Sort of my bucket list for the mountains. Among my top five picks is learning how to ski in the backcountry. It's a big investment, both in time and money, so I signed up for a free introduction. It's offered daily on Whistler Black Home. One part hikers, one part high heels. I'm a mountain girl, always looking for the next adventure. This is where dreams are made. Dreams that are meant to be shared. From peak to valley, from snow to sun, I'm Nicole Fitzgerald, and this is The Fitz List. Doing everything you've ever wanted to do. The cougar shoots that are just up there, they're definitely avalanche terrain. They slide on a fairly regular basis. And Avalanche awareness became an important part of Mikey Nixon's life when in his senior year of high school, four friends died in an avalanche. They went searching for early season snow. They didn't have the gear or the necessary knowledge to make um, the decisions that would have you know, brought them home safe at the end of the day. The incident had a lasting impact. For four years now, Mikey has volunteered to host free avalanche awareness tours run daily at 12.30 p.m. on Blackcomb Mountain. Some guests take the two-hour tour for fun. Others, like myself, have ulterior motives. Really excited to head out on a tour today and learn a little bit more about avalanche awareness. I'm kind of interested in maybe getting into backcountry skiing. Oh, great. You're going to have a great time. 
This is just a little introduction that will open your eyes to what type of courses you need to take, what kind of gear you need to buy, and what type of groups you need to get associated with before you start heading out there. We'll probably do one run just to assess your skiing ability, and then we'll tailor the, uh, the Avalanche Tour from there. Sounds great, let's head out. Great. The first part of the tour brings us down to the weather station at the base of the Cat Skinner chair. Weather is the architect of all avalanches. Everything about weather contributes to whether snow is going to stay or snow is going to move. This station gathers information such as air temperature and accumulated snowfall. Basically, the mountain's vitals, which are assessed by the weather forecaster and Blackcomb Ski Patrol crew. Maps at the patrol hut illustrate the names of all the avalanche areas within Whistler Blackcomb boundaries that patrol needs to mitigate. I think a lot of people take it for granted that they're skiing in a safe area and they don't really understand what exactly goes into opening it up and keeping everyone safe for the day. There's a group of highly trained individuals in there who go out every single morning and they make sure that it's not dangerous. All right, so we're at the top of the Beacon Basin here. Uh, this is one of the best resources that the ski hill has for honing your avalanche skills, uh, especially in the companion rescue department. Transceivers, sometimes called beacons, are planted under the snow in this training demonstration area, simulating a skier trapped beneath an avalanche. As part of the tour, Mikey unpacks the lifeline of a backcountry rider to demonstrate their use. Pinpoint exactly where the victim is underneath the surface. The beacon is absolutely useless unless you have a shovel and a probe that are in your pack at all times. Mikey switches his beacon signal from transmit to search and then zigzags back and forth, honing in on the signal. Once found, a probe is used to locate the body, or bag in this case. Each action requires specific, systematic steps. There's a lot to learn. Even shoveling has its own specific techniques that can save a life. But again, this tour is just an introduction, a taste of what's to come. There's a lot to know when traveling into the backcountry. The next step would be taking an avalanche skills training course. Get your level one. It's about a three-day course. It'll give you the necessary tools to start learning. Curious minds can begin here, though. It's a place to have some fun and not to mention gain a greater appreciation of what the outstanding men and women of Whistler Blackcomb Ski Patrol do to keep us riding safe all season long. From Whistler, I'm Nicole Fitzgerald for Shaw TV. Participants must be able to ski or snowboard a blue intermediate run to take the tour. Tours depart daily at 12.30 p.m. on the top of Solar Coaster on Blackcomb Mountain. And remember, they're free. Look out for more Fitz lists as we explore the beautiful backcountry, looking into gear, courses, and finally pushing off into the wild woolly wilderness we call home. The Express, your local voice. Next up, Sustainable Eats. After the break, the daily catch seafood fish lovers can feel good about. People want to know where their food's coming from. Grab your stilettos and leave your inhibitions at home. And feeling cheeky? Chair dancing unlocks your sensual side. Nicole Fitzgerald's clothing provided by Peak Performance. Ski gear provided by Nordica. Hair styling by The Loft Salon. Makeup by Beauty Mark. Parking provided by the Fire Rock Lounge.